Hey everybody, Batmerk here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Slaughter of the Soul by At The Gates. Uh, this album I believe came out in 1992. Uh, this is a very important uh, metal, uh, metal album in the in the um, genre of metal. It uh, popularized the uh, Gothenburg sound and it was one of the key albums of uh, melodic death metal. Um, yeah, I remember back in the day like when I was uh, playing in bands and stuff, um, this was a big influence on a lot of American bands like Kill Switch Engage and uh, you know, as they lay dying, and you know, a uh, bunch of those metalcore bands bleeding through, and and um, yeah, there's just a bunch of them. Can't even you know, Soil Work, even the, the Swedish bands too. But yeah, it's an awesome album. Um, this is the cover art right here. It's like a basically um basically like a collage. You can check it out. And this was kind of like a like a reissue that I got, I think, back in like 2000 and something like that. So, but it's still, still like a reissue, and that's some of the uh, album art right there. The band broke up, but then they got back together like 20 years later, and everybody was like waiting for them to come back, and they did. And then they put out a new album, and then uh, two years after that, they they put out a another album after that. And uh, the band has like these uh, these twins. One plays the guitar, and the other one plays the bass. And I guess one of the twins just didn't want to do it anymore. And I guess you know they they're just like, oh, we got to do it. You know, we got a bunch of people that want to that want to play, that want to hear us. You know, we, they, they they're so big like in the in the metal scene that people want to listen to them. But that's a little background information on them. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically the uh, album cover right there, and that's the album CD art. Nothing too crazy. Um, the CD had like a really the the guitar tone in here was like had its own sound. A lot of people tried to replicate it, and basically they used like two microphones into the um into the uh, into the amplifier, um, and it was recorded at Studio Studio Fredman, um, and uh, yeah, it's just got a really cool like tone. Um, the first song on here is "Blinded by Fear." This is the uh, single I would say off the album. They used to play it on Headbangers Ball back in the day. I don't know if a lot of you cats listen to watch that show, but it, it it was on MTV and then it was taken off and then I think ten years later it was brought back on uh, MTV two and uh, this one starts with this industrial like intro kind of like a Nine Inch Nails type thing or Ministry and then it transcended this like you know classic at the gates riff this riff will either you know you'll either connect with this riff or you won't you know you either love it or you just be like whatever uh, the vocals are perfect on this track it's the the background riff is just it's awesome it sounds like this you know this badass horror movie, you know, uh, music, and it's just, it's really cool, check the, check the, um, the, check the video out on the tube, um, it's really cool if you get a chance, um, the second song on here is the, uh, track, the, uh, off the album, the title track, Slaughter of the Soul, this one begins with, um, again, you know, a, an iconic At the Great, At the Gates riff, and then it just, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's metal, you know, it's, <laughs> From like you know, it sounds like a like kind of like a Slayer riff, meets like at the gates, and it's just basically you know, horror meets a Gothenburg sound with Slayer, and uh, it's got this beautiful like assault of like repetition slaughter, man. Like the the singer Thomas's vocals again are like wretched as fuck. The solo section is entertaining, but it's short and sweet, and the fucking guitar, man, the guitar tone like I was talking about, it's just perfect, and it's just you know, it's got like a, a weird like bluesy sound to it too. A lot of a lot of metal has um a lot of metal has um has blues in it, you know. And sometimes sometimes it's not really like in your face. You gotta kind of you gotta kind of look for it. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, number three is Cold. I think this has got one of the best intros ever, like in metal. Nothing too technical, but it's perfect in the way it drops into the uh, like another at the gates classic melodic verse after verse. You know, uh, the song makes you feel like you're cold. Um, it's like the title when you listen to it, but you know it doesn't stop you from like banging your head if you're frozen or not. It's you know it's awesome. The the clean guitar breakdown into the solo, it's fucking sweet too. And the part with where the um there's this part where the um the guitars cut like they take the guitars cut out and the singer is just like basically um he's just singing along with the um just the drums and the uh the guitar, you know. Or just the drums and the bass. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just like a pretty creative song layout. The uh, fourth song on here is Under a Serpent Sun. This track starts off with this like cool, evil, catchy, melodic riff. Then it drops into this heavy fucking locomotive machine sounding riff. And then it jumps into like an awesome At the Gates riff. Uh, right in the chorus. 
And uh, this one has like another, you know, it's just it's just like another classic on the album, you know. It just has some legit classic horror movie feels to it. That's just like the way, like one of the, that's just kind of the way that their their music sounds. It has like, they, I would describe their sound as like, kind of like uh, melodic death metal meets like classic horror movies. So if you're into horror movies and, and metal, you're gonna fucking love this band. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really cool. Um, the fifth song on here is uh, Into the Dead Sky. And this is basically like an acoustic, clean, industrial, you know, type instrumental. Or not, not really industrial, but instrumental, like, um, intermission track. I always think it's cool when, like, um, when when bands, like, put that kind of, I don't know, they put that kind of um, acoustic track right in the middle of the album. And then it, um, I don't know, it kind of breaks up the album a little bit, especially if, like, it's pretty heavy and stuff like that. You're going to, I don't know, it's, I think it kind of breaks the album up a little bit and brings some, um, I don't know, brings brings a, a balance to the album, I guess, if you will. The sixth song on here is, uh, the sixth song on here is Suicide Nation. And uh, I think this is a perfect song for a Deadshot movie or a Suicide Squad movie. It starts with a gun clock and then it drops into this like heavy-ass metal blues riff. Then it jumps into another riff that is like um, impossible not to, bl to to bang your head to. And then the drums, like they comp they complement the guitars perfectly too. And I think the um, drummer plays his like punk beats because they use a lot of punk beats in this band, and he he plays it like in a different manner where he like he always has like his hand like hovering over the snare, like just about to hit it. I don't know. I saw like a documentary on the way he plays his drums, like a little mini doc. It's pretty fucking crazy. And I remember like I remember my drummer back in the day was talking about how he how he always could constantly come down and have like a hard hitting like like this. This punk beat, um, the way that they, they use it a lot in metal, too. But, yeah, it's it's pretty fucking awesome. It's just, like, an instant classic. Again, another one of those songs where you should definitely, like, tube up. Check out on, on, on YouTube. Um, the seventh song on here is World of Lies. This is a fucking heavy-ass metal track, simply put. It's got, like, you know, fast, evil, melodic verses, you know, that will, you know, they'll make you want to fuck shit up. I don't know how else to say it. And then they have these like slow melodic riffs that you know can make you you know I don't know appreciate what what they're what they're doing you know what I mean like and the, the song I don't know and they, they they just have these these slow parts and then like a lot of the songs on here are fast like like they're short but they're packed with a lot of like they're packed with a lot of like punch you know and they got a lot of cool melodies in them and they're really like interesting to listen to like if you're into metal you're gonna you're gonna want to listen to this a lot. You're gonna hear new things every time, uh, every time you listen to it. You're gonna, you're gonna appreciate it. Um, the uh, eighth song on here is this one right here is um, it's, it's uh, unto others. This is like just a solid track, you know, with with classic at the gates, epic verses. It feels like you're you're flying through like this hell, hellish like cityscape. You know the way the guitar verses are layered; they're just layered in certain parts. It really provides like an extent like like dimension of sound. It has like this, um, there's also like this, um, like acoustic breakdown in the middle of the song too. It's like a slight acoustic breakdown, um, where the, the singer's kind of doing his vocals over it. It's, it sounds really cool. And, uh, the, um, ninth song on here is, uh, this song's called Nausea. And this one, um, it starts off like, um, like kind of like with a thrashy track. And then it hikes up and down, like with these different, uh, different verses like the way that the song like flows and um the um they, they have like the, i don't know the way the again the, the way the melodies kind of accent each other and how we how they layer the guitar melodies on top of each other it just like transcends into i don't know and it goes into this this thrash riff and right into the solo section it's just um i don't know it's a it's a cool track definitely uh definitely one of my favorite tracks on the album i i recommend it uh, the tenth song on here is "Need," another at the gates classic. Um, the chorus on this one, it kind of has like an um, like kind of like an uplifting feel, if you will. Um, like like you're at the end of a war and you're fighting and, and you're gonna lose and then you're gonna lose the battle and then uh, some some reason at the end you um, you uh, you end up winning, you end up winning the battle and uh, yeah, that's the way that the chorus makes you feel. And it sticks out in a good way. You know, this song is, is short. Like I was saying, a lot of the songs on here, they're short. 
but they're sweet and this is one of them and it's just crazy how they pack a lot of this like these epic melodies into these short songs um so it's, it's kind of like the last song on the album basically and i think that's maybe that's why it has that uplifting feel to it upon listening to it again and, and, you know in retrospect when i think about it um and then the 11th song on here is the flames of the end this is an outro track it's industrial this one reminds me of, like a horror movie from the 80s or a, or a horror video game from the 80s you know either way it's it's fucking awesome and um yeah it's awesome and um basically it would go good like on a like on a trailer maybe like a movie trailer or maybe like if you're say like a comic skate book you're gonna do like a trailer or something like that that would be really cool so awesome um that's pretty much the album right there at the gates i give it two horns up it's a essential album like every i think everyone that likes metal should go out and run out and buy it right now or download it i would suggest buying the vinyl if you can one of the best metal albums ever in my opinion one of the best um one of the best uh pieces of music ever i you know i can play it over and over um you know the the band you know like again like i said they came back after 20 years and everybody went and ran out and watched them and they still got it they started a whole genre of American metal and metalcore and the Gothenburg sound. And they, I don't know, the guitar tone on this album, just, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Just just go check it out. Like, if you're into Slayer, even. Um, and this album, too, also has, like, a bunch of covers on it, too. But I'm not really going to go into those too much. Um, but this right here, I was just kind of, this kind of how the, the singer kind of reminded me of the way the singer looked back in the day. But just a little more crazier. I'm just fucking around with this. In the video for I think Blinded by Fear, he's wearing like a big trench coat and looks pretty, looks pretty crazy. And uh, I was at the beer store the other day, and I came across this beer, Pliny the Elder. And this is a fucking beer that I've heard about for years, and everyone's always like raving about it, this and that. I'm talking like fucking maybe even like eight years I've heard about it, but I've never ever had one. And it's funny because it's during the uh, Sharonopolis that I I see the empty shelf and I see this motherfucker chilling in the back. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna grab it. So. This is it right here. It's a eight percent. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a crack at it. It's a Russian River Brewing. It smells it smells kind of like a IPA. Pliny the Elder. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's almost yeah, pretty good beer. Yeah, it's, uh, right here, it's, um, something about a Roman naturalist scholar. Yeah, you could check it out. 8%. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like an IPA. Pretty good, though. Kind of like an IPA meets, like, a, like, a, a barley wine. Definitely give Pliny the Elder, uh, Two horns up. Not as crazy everybody says it is, though. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you guys like comics, I got my uh, book right here. It's called Butch Cleaver. This is going to be the cover right here. These are the uh, inks that I did on a Bristol board. Scanned it in the computer. It's the main character right there. He can uh, basically manipulate bone on a molecular level, and he makes different bone weaponry. He's got his bone six-shooter, and then, uh, yeah, his cleaver. And then there's another picture right there of uh, him uh being resurrected and uh basically butch cleaver is a it's a comic skate book and uh, what comic skate is and it's a it's a network of fans and creators that uh basically really just care about customer service and giving the fans and customers exactly what they want doing the best that they can to, to serve them and uh we basically you know don't really care too much about extreme politics or extreme religion in our books and uh, if you want, you can come on over and sign up for my email. And uh, if you sign up and back my book, <clears throat> I'll, I'll know and I'm going to give you a free surprise. So if you want, it's Butch Cleaver right there. There's some more um, pictures of it right there. A little bit of promo art. And um, if you want to, you could go over to Indiegogo and check out this book right here. It's called Monster MD. I did back it too. And it's basically, um, it's a uh, it's a big campaign right now too. Um it's got some awesome artwork. It's a little overview. Monster MD is a 100-page, full-color, return to wildly fun adventure uh, comic with heart, soul, and hell. Even a spleen. Don't ask why or how the spleen. 
I got a guy. Surgical prodigy and underground monster doctor, Dr. Wyatt Black, wants out of his dangerous job of monster mending. But when his invisible assistant Heidi is kidnapped by this nightmare, the monster killing madman that took his arm and ruined his medical career, he must depend on his paranormal patients more than ever. So this book right here is it's going to be awesome. It's going to be like one of the biggest uh crowdfunded books, like one of the one of the biggest um comicscape books. The the art is on like another level. It just pops. It's just it's just all fucking fun. If you're into anything metal or horror or just fun entertainment, that's like you know you're going to you're definitely going to look at that. You're going to love this. That's his assistant smoking. See the lungs? They're just filled with smoke. So come on over and check out a Monster MD. You guys are gonna love this. I'll have a link in the description. And if you want, yeah, back it. You can get the signed comic. It's only twenty five bucks, and it comes with all these fucking perks. You guys need to jump on this. Um, it's only got like a couple, maybe like a couple weeks left. If that, I'm not sure. But check it out. And if you want, you could, uh, you know, um, pick up Slaughter of the Soul. And uh, you know, you guys just stay positive. Um, this Sharona, Sharona things gonna end pretty soon. We're thinking maybe by uh, by by hopefully in some places um, Easter, so it should should be awesome. And uh, as always, folks, if you like metal, you like movies, you like brewskis, uh, you like comics, then smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for metal, movies, and brewskis. You guys have a great day. God bless and be good.